So in this tutorial, I'm going to show how to make this text effect. We'll talk about how to add this text, pattern lines, auto strokes, 3D effects, drop shadows, and the background. Chapters have been added for your convenience. Now let's begin. All right, guys, now that you understand the concept, now let's try and start and build this thing. So the first thing, obviously, is that I'm going to add text. For that, you can select the text tool, press T, or simply select the text tool from the left. And I'm going to write the word blues, B-L-U-E-S. Whoops, I pressed the tab. Need to go back in text and kind of press backspace and it's fine. So the next thing is, obviously, I'm going to make it bigger, kind of central line it and give it a font. And the font that I'm going to choose is going to be Tahoma, T-A-H-O-M-A, the Tahoma bold. All right, once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to turn this text into a compound path. So I'll go in the objects. First of all, I'll expand it and press OK, which is equivalent to making it into an outlines. Now it is no longer a text. Now it has become an object. So now let's go in the objects again and turn it into a compound path. So I'll go in the objects and come down here in the compound path and press make. So what it has done is that by making any object into a compound path, what it does is that it treats all its different part as one object. There may be different letters right now, but eventually when I'll start working with them, they will behave like a single object. So as you may see, I'm trying to change the color here and trying to see what is going to suit well. I want a kind of a lighter shade of you know blue. Uh, but obviously we need to add it from the appearance panel. I'm just trying it out. So I'll set the fill to none here on the left hand side. I'll copy this, cancel it or press OK, whichever you want. Basically, I'll set it to none and now I'll go in the appearance panel and in the appearance panel, I'm going to add a new fill and I'm going to give it a blue color. So I added a new fill, I just need to delete it. I have an extra one here. So I already have one here, so I'll use that. I'll give it the blue color and I'll come here, paste the value and press OK. So first so good. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fill on top of this blue color and I'll change it into a pattern. So let's first add a fill. Now let's go down here on the left hand side in the library and down here I'll go in the patterns in the basic graphics and select basic lines. So from here I'm going to test through different strokes, different lines, different styles and see what I really like at the end. I'll select this one. It's evenly spaced but as you may notice the dark lines are you know not properly visible so i'll lighten this blue color and now i'll press ok so the next thing what i'm going to do is that i'm going to change the direction of this pattern the graphic lines that i have added uh, which basically means transforming as you may see i'm trying to transform using the transform available here and i'm trying to edit it but it's not working since it's applying on the full object what we actually need is that we need to apply it in a way through the appearance panel by going here in the fx in the distort and transform and from here we can change it here you can see uh, there is an option of not transforming the objects or transforming the objects i have unchecked it and i'm trying now different angles and i'll press ok but the mistake that I've just made is that I have applied it on the blue fill instead of applying it on the graphic dots. So, so if this happens with you, all you have to do is you have to simply push the effect that you have applied to a certain layer to a different layer by simply clicking on it and dragging it onto that fill or that layer. So I'll hold it and push it here under the graphic lines fill. Now, as you can see, the stroke angle has changed that of the lines. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a stroke on the top as I'm using the default one here on the top and I'm increasing its weight as you can see it's visible now but I'll do two things with it now one is that I'll change its color obviously it's black right now I'll match it with the blue I'll go here in the strokes double click on it and I'm going to give it the blue fill and I'm going to darken it so that it's nicely visible the next thing what I'm going to do is that I'm going to align this stroke on the inside of the path of the stroke path 
for that let's go here in the align and stroke and press this middle one here align strokes not on the outside the middle one here align stroke on the inside so what it has done is it has aligned the stroke on the inside of the path of the stroke so it stays inwards next i'm going to add a drop shadow so i'll go in fx and in the stylize and drop shadow and i'm going to set the settings as you may see on the screen and you can see it in the preview that the drop shadow is on the inside of the text as if the stroke is casting a shadow on the fill color the pattern fill color on the inside that is what i want to achieve so that the stroke is more finely visible on the outside now let's simply add one more stroke as you may see it has added on the top and i'll start editing it right now first of all i'll change its thickness to 5.5 points the stroke that we added earlier had a thickness of 3.5 points so i'll make it 5.5 points so that it's thicker and better visible the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to change its color and make it even lighter so you can see i'll double click it and i'm going to make it even lighter something like this and press ok and now i'm also going to align this stroke but not on the inside but on the outside so what it has done is it has pushed the stroke effect on the outside of the path and with that as you may see the stroke that i have added now is finely visible on the outside so we have two strokes one is on the inside and one is on the outside so i'll make minor adjustments to the drop shadow here this is fine next i'm going to copy this text this whole text effect and i'm going to paste it in the back so i'll go here in the layers and when i'll paste in back i'll go here and paste it in the back as you can see now when i open the layers there are two compound parts there's just the same copy of one another so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the lower one here and i'm going to delete all its stroke and i'll leave it with the fill and the stroke that is on the topmost the one that i had set on the outside once selected i'll keep the top one i'll choose this lower stroke and delete it then the next one then the patterns and now i'm selected with the base fill and the top stroke which is set on the outside and i'm going to unite these both for that let's let's just go here in the layers panel i'll lock this top layer and also hide it so that now you can see the layer that's below with a fill and a stroke set to it so next i'm going to go in the pathfinder with the layer selected and i'm going to press unite now this has become as one single object so i'll go here in the objects and come down here in the compound path and of course make it a compound path so as you can see now this is one single object so i'll go back in the layers panel and unhide and unlock the top layer as you can see everything is fine it's just that the lower layer has now a single unified object so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the dark stroke copy its hex value and go back on the layer below here select the text and paste this value and make this color much much darker all right so far so good so next up what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy it and paste it in the back and i'm going to select this the lowest one and i'm going to move it to the right and a little bit down as you may see on the screen the objective simply is to have a 3d feel to the object for this i'm displacing the lower layer and i'll use the blend mode to make it into a proper 3d field so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the lower compound part, these two. But before that, I'll simply unhide the top layer so that it's nicely visible to you that what is happening at the moment. So I'll go here and, and unhide the top layer. So as you can see, the one has been displaced. So I'm going to select these compound parts, the lower two ones, this and this. And now I'm going to go into the objects and into the blend options. Now you can select it from below here, but I'll go here in the objects and into the blend and into the blend options and choose specified steps and i'll make it around 50 and press ok and now i'll go back again and press make and there you go now it has given it the 3d feel so now it's, i'm gonna do one more thing here now i'm gonna select this blend just the blend so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna select this blend and then copy it and again paste it in the back and select the blend that is above and simply expand it i'll go here in the objects and expand and press ok now it has opened expanded all the 50 layers i'll combine them by going here in pathfinder and pressing unite and now it is not a blend but a single object once again
Next, I'm going to select the blend that is right at the bottom and I'm going to move it to the left and below as if it is casting a shadow on the wall. It will become more understandable as I reduce its opacity. Once I move it, I'm going to reduce its opacity, not the color, but the opacity. So I'll go here in the properties, come down here in the opacity and reduce its opacity. Now, as you may see, it gives the effect as if this 3D text is planted on the wall and it is casting a shadow on the left hand side. I'll make minor adjustments and I'll reduce the size of the artboard, the canvas, so that you can see how it looks like from a distance. All right. So far, so good. So now I'm going to add a background 1920 by 1080 pixels and I'll keep the dark color of the blue on it and simply center align it on the artboard and then press it below using control shift bracket. Now I'm adding a small rectangle as a swatch because I'll need two colors, the dark one and from the appearance panel from the text, I'll also choose the light one and add another box as a swatch. So in the appearance panel, I'll unlock all the layers and select the text on the top and select this fill copy the hex code of this light color Control c press ok open the color picker here and paste this value and press ok so i'm going to apply a gradient to the background for that i'll need these two colors so that is why i have turned them into swatches so it's much easier for me to choose the colors let's apply a gradient like the gradient or press the letter g g for gun and apply a radial gradient and first of all i'll make it move above around here and then i'll apply the colors for that I'll go on the panel on the right hand side and apply these two colors to the white I'll use this lighter color I'll choose the eyedropper and apply the light color whoops not to the whole thing but to the white color and then on to the black one and again choose color pickle so this is it but it's not looking that great that cool yeah, so I'm gonna make a few more adjustments the one thing is that I'm also going to apply a texture to it a grain texture to this background I'm trying a few things before I do that uh, with the opacity but eventually I'll just go and work with the texture that I want to apply so I'll go up here in the effects come down here and apply this film grain and I'm going to try and change all the values and see how it goes how the you know, texture changes by increasing the highlight area by increasing the grain value by increasing the intensity whoops that's way too high so we need to keep it lower otherwise the effect won't look nicely let's press ok and hit apply well as you can see it's not that cool we need to reduce the intensity we'll go back in the grain we'll go back in the effect and here reduce the highlight area reduce the intensity let it apply first somewhat better but not that cool so i'll keep on tweaking this basically uh, i will increase the speed of this i'll tweak this so that you would be able to see what i'm really trying to do here reducing the size of the effect trying to see how it goes trying to change the way the gradient is distributed reducing the opacity changing the colors so that it looks more uniform let's go back here in the grain effect and let's work inside here and increase the grain size reduce the intensity and now it looks much better making just last few final tweaks it's almost done so as you can see in this tutorial we made a text which has a 3d feel to it and as if it is planted on the wall and we use different layers different stroke effects use the blend to turn the shadow into a 3d solid 3d and this is what we have achieved hope you like it and please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and i want to keep myself independent so if you like my work i want to keep it independent as i really like the graphic designing industry but i'm new to it and to be able to turn it a full-time job is not an easy thing to do so i have set up a patron it would be great if you could support me so that i can stay independent and keep on doing this day and night and keep on developing it and make it into a proper future not only for myself but help all the fellow members in my community who are watching me my videos who are supporting me so that i'll be able to continue to do it for a very long long time thank you so much for your time have a great day